You spoke a lot about you know going to the bank, paying off mortgage, and not a lot of people want to do that, or not not a lot of people can afford to do that. So on that note, are there other ways to raise capital to actually become a property investor? Of course, there is. There's always creative ways of raising capital, and majority of my properties that I've bought is just using creative ways. So one of it is a no money down deal, right? So what is a no money down deal? Basically, I can get the owner. I will use the owner's credit credentials to buy to own that property. So, a no money down deal can be rent to buy. A rent to buy is a typical example of a no money down deal, where if I go in and I negotiate a deal with the owner to say I'm going to buy the property in two years' time, assuming that it's seventy thousand rent, I'll find a tenant. Owner will say pay me a deposit or pay me something and pay my mortgage because whatever the owner is charging, you will be probably to pay the mortgage. So if I've done my homework again, back to the research I'm talking about, and I find a tenant, owner wants 800 rent for me, for example, I know my market, I find a tenant that's going to give me 1,000 rent, I pay the owner 800, it's same like the bank, I keep my 200. When the time comes and I haven't even found a buyer, I haven't sorted out, assuming maybe I have, bad credit record. And two years down the line, I fixed my credit record. I can then go to the bank and take that um, the uh, option that I have with the owner to buy the property. If things are still bad and I can't qualify, what I would then do is that I'll get a buyer. At that time, in typically, and I've done this several times, typically the value of the property in two years time will be higher than what the, the seller wants from you or your landlord wants from you. So I would then go in and sell it at 100000 give the seller, give my landlord the 70000 that we agreed on, I pocket my 30000 I've made money, I can go use it to put a down payment on another deal. So imagine if you do five, 10 of those deals, because who says I must stay in the property to rent the property? I don't have to do that. I can go around, rent 10 properties, put people there. Of course, I take the risk if people don't pay, the owner comes after me. It, uh, the landlord comes after me. It doesn't, it doesn't go after the tenant. But if I put 10 people there, in a, in a year, you can make so much money without using your own money, without going through the bank. It's, it's a tedious exercise to go through. But if you want to make good money, you might as well forget about the TV and go do no money down deals. And you speak about rent to buy. And on that note, I mean, it's something that I'm busy with in my own personal life right now. But if you're a landlord, how do you ensure that you are charging the right rates? Okay, so to ensure that you're charging the right rate, I will look at it from my personal side, right? It's the neighborhood. It's key. What are your other people charging within your neighborhood? That is very critical, right? I need to make sure as a landlord, even when you're a landlord, Assuming you've taken a mortgage or assuming that you inherited your money and you decided to go buy property cash, there's still an opportunity cost there. So if you understand the market, you've done your research, you will then rent the property on that level, on that average level. So it goes back to my thousand rent. So if you rent it out like that, you've done your work, you've understood the market comparison of what's going on or the market analysis of what's, what's happening in your area you then be able to have an average price and that will be your sweet spot. And that's how you determine uh, what you call the right rate for your property. On that other avenues to raise money without buying property without your own money, you can also do stock fell. There's a lot of property stock fells out there that people can go, that they, they can use. You can do installment sales. And there's a new system that's in now, it's called peer-to-peer -peer lending where colleagues and friends are lending each other money. That can also be done. You can look at it. it there's abundant ways of raising money, even if you've got bad credit record. People only think the bank. The bank, of course, it's a commercial rating, and the interest rate is beautiful when you get a bank deal. But there's so many other ways to make money. You can also look at refinancing your property if you already has an existing property and the value has gone up and you bought it with the bank. You can then take the equity portion of that, of that also to buy your other property and you can just partner up. Who says you need to be greedy or you, can, you need to do everything by yourself? When I started, everything I've been talking to you about, my partners, my partners, my partners, the people, the people, the people. 
people are there to partner with. People are there if you have the right mindset, if you're on the wave, same wavelength, you partner with the right people. And it goes back to your business strategy. If you know your identity, which is your business strategy, you can partner up with people and you can make good money together. If you have integrity and you work hard you, and you have creative thinking, you can do that.